Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to my prayer room actually. I've been um, praying and reading this morning and I found something in the Word that I just have to share with you. So uh, sorry about the lighting isn't too great in here, but I just really wanted to share this with you. <clears throat> I'm reading in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19. It's a story that we're all really familiar with probably, but God just showed me something that was amazing and, and I'm hoping that it blesses you. <clears throat> this was right after Elijah, um, the prophets of Baal, the whole thing with Jezebel, and the fire came down and consumed the offering that that um, uh, Elijah had poured the water on, and the fire of God came down and licked everything up, including the water, the sacrifice, the wood, and all that. And then Jezebel gets really angry because all his, her prophets are killed, and so then Elijah's now running for his life. And so um, here it says he arose and ran for his life. Um, left his servant in Beersheba, and then he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree, and he prayed that he might die and said, It's enough. Lord, take my life. And I just know how often... Um, you know, especially in those first couple of years or so when we lost Becca, and I know so many parents have these same thoughts and feelings, God, I just want to die. I can't keep living. So here you have Elijah saying, God, just kill me. Do it. Just do it. As he lay and slept under a broom tree, an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. And he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on the coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and laid down again. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat because the journey is too great for you. So he got up and ate and drank, and he went in that strength of that food. And um, obviously we know this is, this is, we can't go on. We can't go on without God's strength, without him somehow finding a way to minister to us. And so um, then Elijah went into a cave, spent the night in that place, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah gives God this big story about how, God, I've been so zealous for you. I've, I've uh, killed the prophets, and I've torn down the altars. I've done everything right. I've done everything you've asked me to do, and, and why am I here? Now somebody's trying to kill me. What are you doing to me, God? Why are you allowing this to happen? I've done everything right. I've done everything good. I've done everything, and look at where you have me now. Why, God? Why? And it just, it was amazing to me how parallel this story is to us <clears throat> when we lose our child. God, why? Why did you not save my child? Why am I in this place now? Don't you love me? What's almost like what's wrong with you, God? I don't get you. And uh, so that was when Elijah, uh, God told Elijah, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. So he went. And, and if you know the story, the Lord went by. There was a strong wind. It tore the uh, rocks in pieces. I mean, that must have been really scary. God was not in that um strong wind and then there was an earthquake and God was not in that earthquake and then there was a fire I can't imagine a raging fire passing through you on a mountain past you on a mountainside um, but God was not in that fire now he had just been in the fire uh, with the whole prophets of Baal he'd sent a fire from heaven he consumed everything accepted the offering and because God was the fire at that point um, people fell and uh, before the Lord and they believed but in this case with Elijah who was a believer and who loved God, um, God was not in the fire for Elijah. And then we know <clears throat> that after the fire came a still, small voice. And um, so um, God asked him again, what are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah gave him the same story and said, God, I've been zealous. I've done everything for you. Why? Why have you put me in this place? And um, so God just um, encouraged him, told him that's not true. You know, there's other prophets, that kind of a thing. Gave him some instruction, and then Elijah was able to go on his way. But I was just so amazed. And uh, uh, how much this story parallels us in our pain, in our journey of, of losing a child from this earth. And so I want to encourage you, let God minister to you. I know sometimes we can be angry at God. We don't understand because, yes, God is God, and he could have stopped our child from leaving this earth, but for whatever reason, he didn't. And he wants to minister to each one of us in the pain, in the brokenness, in the anger, in our shattered hearts. He is there to minister to us. 
And so I just want to encourage you, find that place where you can hear God's still small voice. Um, you know, ask him to send his ministering angels. Ask him to minister to you, even in, in if you're mad at him, even in your brokenness and your pain, in our not understanding. Just allow God, because he's the only one. He is the only one that can heal our wounded hearts. He's the only one that can take these shattered pieces and put it back together in a way that can help us to live again. And so let God minister to you for this journey, because like I said, the journey is too great for you. The journey, this journey is too great for any of us to live after we've um, had a child leave this earth. So let God minister to you. Uh, I'd just like to encourage you to uh, go to our website. It's gpshope.org. We have things there for you and would love to connect with you there. And also have a Facebook page, GPS Hope, if you want to find us there and connect with us there.